talk about today is that cute lovable pup right there not him for say but what I'm gonna talk to you guys about today is if you want to take your dog in the truck with you magnificent people on this beautiful day the winds blowing 120 miles an hour but as for temps we are pushing 89 almost 90 degrees today's agenda we are going to go right back down to Edwardsville Kansas we were there a few days ago and uh, it worked out pretty good so I'm kind of hoping keeping my fingers crossed that I can keep something like this going for the whole month of April but since I have to come up with different things to talk about because we're going to be running the same route probably pretty much the entire month of April. Now a while back I asked what you guys wanted to talk about. It was a long time ago. And I wrote down a lot of the things that uh, you, know, you guys gave me the ideas on. Which thank you very much for those. So I think we're going to take advantage of those and start using those ideas. But instead of talking about a lot of other things, what we're going to talk about today is that cute, lovable pup right there. Not him for say, but what I'm going to talk to you guys about today is if you want to take your dog in the truck with you, be prepared to change. Yes, I said change. You're going to have to change a lot of things. We're going to talk about that throughout today. But right now, we're just getting hooked up. We're going to smack these tires back here, make sure they're not flat, then we're going to get on the road. Now, last time we went down here, we were hauling, uh, what were we hauling? I think those little pizzas I think we were hauling. Oop, almost forgot the, those are some new tires. Not this time though, we're on steak. Well, what I read is steak, but I think it's a bunch of roast beef. You coming? As for weights, we're just under 42,000 pounds. So first class is gonna be grunting pretty good, especially since we have a headwind. So that vibration we had last week, I dropped her about a half an inch there. Or no, I dropped it one full inch actually. And uh, well, uh, the vibration, the big vibration is gone. Now we're back to that little one we started with, which, man, I was, I was rubbing my hands over those drive tires, and we need to get some new drive tires. They're starting to cup out pretty good. So we might get those this week, or at least the beginning part of next week. I've been calling around trying to find a good set of Firestones, new Firestones, and uh, having some issues finding them. Just for a simple fact, is I don't know why. So I might end up just throwing another set of Yokohamas on it or something. If you guys remember right, we had to do that with our steers because I, I just flat out couldn't, uh, I couldn't find my Firestones that I wanted. Okay, so we've covered everything. We've covered that, we've covered this, we've covered what's in the trailer, we've covered what, where we're gonna go, and we've covered what we're gonna talk about. And we're gonna talk about that beautiful critter back there. Not for say. Sorry, Opie. Now, I'm not going to talk about you completely. We're going to talk about if you guys want to take your dog with you, what has to change? Because trust me, you are going to have to change if you're going to take your pup with you in the truck. I'm just letting you know. And it matters how big the dog is, too. But until we talk about there, let's get on the road. That way we can get at least a little bit of daytime footage in. Because Warden wanted to go for a little motorcycle ride today before I went to work because they didn't have school today. So we went for a motorcycle ride, then I took a little nap, then I'm down to the truck and it's almost dark and rah, 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 rah. Let's go drive a truck.
right by me right here all right now back to our topic we we're going to talk about today first off don't expect too much out of your pup when you first get him in the truck you guys have heard me tell you before how uh, how expensive I always say expensive how expensively trained my two Germans are Jax and Opie um, they are trained in defense so uh, let's just say you're not gonna break into my house without you know missing a jugular or anything with the neck region body um, like Jax um, waist down Opie waist up uh, don't ask about the training I don't talk about it a whole lot just just know that little bit but they are very well trained pups even when I got him in the truck for that first I want to say week maybe two weeks well probably about a week yeah probably about a week I'd put a leash on him and every once in a while <laughs> you sneaky little devil you every once in a while I have to put a leash on him still to this day because he kind of gets to where Miro I know come on to this day he gets to where he's smelling and stuff and I just want him to walk less smell more walk so don't don't expect too much in the wise of you get him in the truck you get your pup in the truck and a lot of trucking dogs they aren't as big as Opie they're a tad smaller <laughs> but if you don't don't basically don't bring him in the truck let him out of the truck and say well I don't have to use a leash at home I don't have to use a leash at a truck stop or at a rest area that might bite you in the butt second thing is everything's gonna change in the wise of how far you're gonna run before I got Opie I know I'm bad but I'd shut that left door and I'd leave that left door shut for 600 miles just rolling on down the road you're not gonna do that when you got one of those and if you do do that shame on you you need to stop more Opie when he first started going with me it was 100 miles and we worked up to 150 and then anything over 150 miles I want to stop anyway so it's usually around that 200 mile mark we will stop run around for I don't know 15 minutes or so guaranteed 15 minutes sometimes a half an hour but we're stopping we're running around and you know out here in this neck of the woods where I'm at here in Iowa Kansas Nebraska Illinois uh, Missouri it'll be 200 miles the most 200 miles once we get when we were going east there was a couple times I pushed him a little bit further than 200 miles just because there's, there's a lack of truck parking in a few spots so just be used get used to having to stop I mean if you're on an electronic log which I think a lot of people are I'm not but you have to you have to debate is can can I do it can he can I bring my dog with me because you know a lot of guys your company only allows you to stop for your 30 minute break that ain't gonna work if all you have is 30 minutes and 11 hours leave the pup at home that's not enough time it's gonna be hard on their hips it's gonna be hard on their joints other joints it's gonna be hard on them. They, they need to get out of the truck. Would you quit peeing on everything? I'm trying to put you on camera. I can't put him on camera. I just can't do it because he, he's marking everything. He, he's, I'm distracted. The screen I look at where you guys, uh, where you guys, the screen I look at on this camera has a big old bug splatter on it from earlier when we were on the motorcycle. I haven't cleaned it yet. There's two things. That's enough talking for this stop. Let's get back on the road right now. We are just south of Omaha, Nebraska, or Council Bluffs, Iowa. Um, our next stop is going to be probably around that St. Joe, Missouri area. I want to stop because I got I have to, I want to make a stop anyway. I want to swing into that lovely loves. It's a little bit of a crazy house in that lovely loves. So I'm hoping by the time we get there, it's kind of calm. Yes, I know it won't be calm, but so I'll see you then.
Well, love's lost. These guys are still at 287 for fuel, so we're gonna get fuel here. Yeah, there's diesel all over the place. We're live. We will live. Another thing to bring in your pup with you. You need to realize you will lose your personal space. Now we all know that when we have our dogs, um, we don't really get a whole lot of personal space anyway to start with. But if you're gonna put them in that sleeper with you, you're gonna lose a lot of personal space. Luckily I have an 86 inch studio sleeper and uh, the studio sleeper comes with a couch. Well, when I bring Opie with me, I lose that couch because well, He's a big dog. He needs that entire bed. That couch needs to be folded down and he needs that entire bed. So even though he's taking up that very small corner, and I will let you know why he's taking up that very small corner here in a second, but he needs that whole bed. So you have options, I mean, Realistically, if you wanted to, you could make him sleep on the floor. Um, me personally, I kind of feel like uh, a, a cushion or a, um, a bed is better for him going down the road. At night, I am fortunate enough, I have a bunk bed up there and I actually like it up there. During the summer, it can get kind of warm, so I have to sleep downstairs with him. And he, he's not a big fan of it because he likes to sprawl out all over that bed. But that's just one thing you're gonna to have to consider. Your personal space disappears. Now, as I said here, and I'm talking about Opie right here, and at the end of this video, I plan on talking about all the pluses of taking a dog with you in the truck. But as I'm just sitting here letting you guys know everything that can, and you know, just think, something to get used to. Like I said, there will be change um, if you take your dog with you. I bought a piece of pizza in here at the truck stop. I set the pizza on the chair, you know, right there, and uh, got out and filled the reefer up. Opie decided he wanted to eat that piece of pizza. He's never done that before. Never once. I've had that dog seven years, and that dog has never once eaten food that he wasn't allowed to eat. Mmm. That tells me one of two things either he's starving to death or I have uh, comforted him a little bit too much now I know he's not starving to death because there is a full bowl of dog food right there so right now he's in timeout yeah he got chomped on a little bit and he's in timeout a darn dog that piece of pizza looked good and before you guys start on me, McDonald's is nice, but he does not need to expect that. He does not have to have that. But I was going to walk over here and grab him some before we left here. I'm not going to anymore. He, he's getting punished. He's he, he's bad dog. So, all right. Well, we are in St. Joe, Missouri right now. Uh, we just got done fueling everything up. Now we're going to boogie on down to uh, Edwardsville, Kansas. We're not too far away from Edwardsville at this point, so it shouldn't take long. We'll get there and I'll finish up this little chat, right?
Alrighty guys, this is going to be the exact same thing as last time we were down here. This is a drop trailer. Um, we're going to drop this loaded one off, pick up an empty trailer. Judging that it's ready, because technically it's not even supposed to be ready till 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. The last time we were down here, they were on the ball. They had an empty one waiting for me. Let's see if we can pull that off again. Yeah, I know, he's grounded. This is kind of like his detention. You gotta go to detention for bad behavior, right? Now don't start on me, guys. Oh, but he's so cute. Oh, he's just a dog. Don't be so mean. I treat these dogs better than I do my kids. No, not really. My kids are spoiled rotten. But darn it. I need to have at least two things that listen to me, and those got to be the dogs. He doesn't seem to mind it. All right, let's, let, let's get to the point on this whole thing, how this dog thing is going to change your world if you want to take him in the truck. Let's finish it up with, if you want to uh, sort cleanliness. Okay, you as a truck driver out here, you know, we want to take a shower every day, if not every other day. You know, because no one really likes a smelly truck driver. But you're going to have a dog in your truck now. I guarantee you no one likes a truck driver who stinks, let alone smells like a dog. And I know you might be the only one in that truck with your dog, but keeping that truck clean would, uh, would really be a positive part. At least in my world it is. So I have a shark vacuum now you want to make sure you have a vacuum that has a brush on it you know the brushes that spin you want to make sure you have those otherwise it's not going to get the hair up just the suction alone 
and uh, I vacuum the truck every day. Um, if we have a lot of kill, a lot of time sitting around, I vacuum the truck twice a day. But the bed that he lays on, yeah, it's getting done every night. All right, so I told you how your world's gonna change with all that stuff you're gonna have to do. If you're gonna take a dog in the semi truck with you. Here's the best part about it. It is so nice having someone to talk to. Yeah, I talk to you guys, or yeah, I talk on the phone. But when you're going down the road, no, he's not gonna be sitting beside you in your seat. It's most likely the dog's gonna be in the bed laying down, relaxing while you're driving. But all you gotta do is call him up. He's gonna come up there, and he's gonna sit beside you, or he's gonna get in between the seats, and you're going to sit there and pet him and talk to him. And, um, Opie, Opie has his own personality. Which he does not want to show you guys because he doesn't want to look at me because he's on a leash and he feels ashamed to be on a leash. But it's worth it if you guys can pull it off. And I mean, if you guys can make it work, if you guys can do it, just, just know that it's not as easy as just throwing your dog in the truck and calling it good. So if you guys can make it work, it's so worth it. I love I, you little. Oh man, that dog keeps looking at me like, Dad, I'm super sorry, man. But it's worth it. I love him. I love having him with me. Anywho, we're, uh, we have an empty trailer. I am two for two down here, guys. Sometimes I just want to give my travel agent a big old hug. He probably wouldn't like that, though. I don't know if he watches these, but he probably wouldn't like that if I walked up to him and gave him a big old hug. He did an outstanding job on this part. We, uh, we not only have an empty trailer, but we have an empty trailer with a shiny hiney. Did you see yourself? I hope you did. We have an empty trailer with a shiny hiney. Well, our reload is, uh, well, we'll just go ahead and end this. We'll talk about the reload tomorrow. You guys keep yourself safe. And as always, I'll see you next time. Just pit my belly, that's all I ask. Please, Daddy. You know I can't stay mad at you, but if you do that again, we're gonna have issues.